what are we going to do next? The next thing I'm going to do is use one of those facts that we proved a moment ago, specifically that I don't have to include this y bar. Specifically, that the sum of the xi minus x bar times yi minus y bars is equal to the sum of the xi minus x bar times yi. So I'm going to write this again. I've got the expected value of the sum of xi minus x bar times yi given x divided by this denominator. Okay. What's next? The next thing to note is that when I'm taking the expectation of a sum, that's the same as the sum of the expectation. Suppose that a whole lot of times I'm going to roll a die and write down the number, flip a coin, write down a 0 or 1, and add those things together. And I could take the mean of all those results, all those quantities. The mean of those values is exactly the same mean I'd get if I just took the mean of a roll of a die plus the mean of the 0, 1 coin flip. The sum of means is the same as the mean of sums. So I get to bring this expectation sign inside the summation. I get to take the summation sign out. So now I'm going to have the expectation of x bar, xi minus x bar times yi. But remember that xi minus x bar is just a constant here. That's just the difference uh, between a particular person's height and the average height, but it's fixed. We're conditioning on x. That's some number, like 10. So that doesn't have to be in the expectation either. The only thing that goes in the expectation is the yi. And we still have this denominator. Now what? Remember that the expected value of yi given x is just the point on the line. In other words, what value would you expect to see for y for a particular person with a certain value of x? Well, wherever the line predicts for that person. In other words, beta 0 plus beta 1 x. That's what we wrote down a moment ago. So what I have here is the sum of xi minus x bar times beta 0 plus beta 1 xi whole thing divided by the sum of the square differences on x bar. What I'm going to do next is multiply this numerator through. What do I have? I have the sum over all the data points of xi minus x bar times beta 0 plus the sum over all the data points of xi minus x bar times beta 1 times xi. And the whole thing is divided by the sum of xi minus x bar squared, or I could also just note that that's the same as dividing each of these quantities by the sum of the squared differences on x. What are we going to do with these quantities? Let's look at this first one. What do we have? We have the sum of each person's xi minus x bar times beta naught. But remember that beta naught is just the intercept. It's some true number. It's some number, like 7. Okay? So I can take that out of the summation. 7 times the sum of the differences on x. But what's the sum of the differences between each value of x and the mean of x? It's just 0. This numerator here simplifies to 0 because the beta 0 is the same, regardless of which person we're thinking of. This whole first term is gone. So now we get to focus on the second term. OK? This beta 1 here is going to come out because it's just some number. So we're going to factor it out. We've got beta 1 times the sum of xi minus x bar times xi divided by the sum of xi minus x bar squared. I claim that we're done. Why do I get to claim that? Think back to the set of equations we wrote initially. 
Another way to write the sum of xi minus x bar squared is the sum of xi minus x bar times xi. This numerator is the same as this denominator. It's just another way to write the same thing. In other words, this whole expression here is equal to 1. This whole thing says beta 1 times 1. In other words, the expected value of beta 1 hat given x is just beta 1. On average, over all possible samples, given the normal model that we've specified, the estimated slope coefficient will be the true slope coefficient. We've demonstrated that beta 1 hat is unbiased.